Hello, everyone. We are here with Jenny Sassoon today. She is the founder of Unleashing You, where she provides one-on-one -on -one coaching and leadership training to professionals and entrepreneurs and leaders who are at the beginning of their careers. Thank you, Jenny, for joining us today. We look forward to hearing your talk about the extraordinary leader, the mindset to you, and the need to succeed in your business and your career. Thank you. Just a second. Thank you so much. Um, is everyone able to see the screen here? Yes. Okay, great. So first of all, thank you. I'm just gonna pick up everyone's face here. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I just wanna thank the Negev, High I'm gonna get this right, okay. The Negev High Tech Faculty Startup Accelerator, right, NHSA, it's first time being here and the Frankel Center at Ben Gurion University of the Negev. Thank you so much for having me and joining me in this talk that I'm really excited to share with you about the extraordinary leader, the mindset you need to succeed in your business and in your career. So I'm going to, um, I appreciate Rosemary and uh, the introduction that you had for me. I'm just gonna give you a little bit more um, about who I am, you know, uh, where all this information <laughs> that I'm gonna share with you is coming from today. So I have been in the, the professional um, helping, uh, coaching and empowerment uh, field for over 20 years now, first as a social worker. Um, and then for the last 10 years, I founded my business called Unleashing You, where I guide professionals, entrepreneurs, and leaders who are at a new beginning, whether it's in their business, in their career or in their personal life and relationships. And I guide them to direction and confidence and empower them with the tools, the leadership skills, the communication skills to be able to um, get over whatever is getting in the way, whether it's limiting beliefs, um, any barriers that are getting in the way and to help them to move forward with confidence and to be able to thrive successfully um, on their path, whether it's in their career, in their business or in their personal life. Um, I'm also a startup mentor um, where I mentor uh, startup founders um, uh, through an accelerator uh, called Mass Challenge. And I've been doing that for the last three and a half years as well um, with much enjoyment. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Um, and let us get into now talking about practical ways for you to create the mindset that you need to be successful effective and to thrive in your business and in your career and also in your life. So I'd like to start out um, by sharing with you my journey to adopting a leadership mindset. So my journey began uh, with an assignment. Um, it was an assignment that I was given uh, when I was a studying to be a professional certified coach. This was already, uh, this is about 15 years ago. And at the time I was already a social worker working as a social worker at the time. And I wanted to enhance my training and move in this direction of coaching people as I always believe um, um, in the power of empowerment. And that's what coaching provided. We were given this assignment to write our signature story now for our business, right? Because we were about to launch these businesses moving forward after we were going to receive our certification. And the signature story is a story that um, it serves as the why. It serves as the guide, like the why behind you do the work that you do. So it's a very powerful foundation for anything that you're going to be doing moving forward. So I was very excited about this assignment. I felt very good about the story that I was going to share because I was going to share, not was going to, I chose to wrote about a very significant time in my life um, where I became a hero. What do I mean by that? I became a hero in my own life. I became a hero um, to my associates, to my close uh, personal friends and my family. Why? Because I wrote about the time where I uh, confronted my abuser, someone who had abused me as a child, 
And it was a very powerful time in my life and a very powerful experience where I was able to take back my personal power and freedom. So I felt very good about sharing this story, using this story as my signature story. So I read it, hand in my assignment. I mean, I wrote it, I hand in my assignment and I'm anticipating, I'm looking forward to the feedback I'm going to get from um, my instructor. Uh, because she had scheduled appointments with each of us to give us feedback on this story because it's a significant uh, piece that we all need in order to be able to, you know, uh, move forward with creating our businesses moving forward. So I am very much looking forward to this phone call. And I think, wow, she is going to think this is the greatest story that she's like ever heard. Okay. So what happens? I get the phone call. We get on the phone. I'm excited. And she says to me, she says, Jenny, you know, um, this was a story. It was written very well. You're a very good writer. And I said, okay. And I'm waiting for, you know, the praise to come. And she says, you know, I want to tell you something. I'm just being honest with you here. You know, um, half the class has a very similar story to yours. Right. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so it, this was really a, a bit of a shock. You know, I wasn't expecting her to say that. And it really, um, what it did was it, uh, it made me question things about in terms of, well, if this is such a powerful thing, well, what makes me unique? What makes me different? What makes me special? What's going to give me that oomph to really, you know, be successful moving forward? Well, she didn't stop there. She went on to say that she noticed something about me uh, and where I'm at when she was reading my story. So even though on the outside, um, you know, I mean, I was pushing forward, doing well, you know, uh, achieving things in my life. Um, she says, I noticed something. I noticed when I'm reading your story that between the lines, what I'm hearing from you and how you're sharing your story is that you're still so full of anger, pain, and blame. And she was right. But I didn't know that there was another way. I thought, okay, this is the challenges in my life and I'm just going to push forward and push through and succeed, right? We all experience this. We've got challenges. And so we just push forward from there. I didn't know that there was another way to be. I just thought this was my lot, this is my experience. I'm just gonna move forward with blame, with anger, with whatever, and I'm gonna do my best. Well, she shared um, a lesson in that moment because she went further to say to me that no. She said, if I wanted to go out there into the world as a successful business owner, as a successful coach, and frankly, to just be able to thrive in my life, I needed to rewrite this story from a different perspective. She said that every single word in my story, right? And I'm, that's why it's in quotes there. The story of my life, me, had to come from a place of me taking personal responsibility for everything. It means everything, any challenge, um, the, the difficult things, not just the easy and good things, everything that I was needed to take charge. Now, that was a big kind of, whoa, like smack in the face that I wasn't expecting. But what I was really determined, I was really determined to be that successful person that she was talking about, to finally be able to move away from this extra burden that I was carrying with me. I didn't even know that was possible. So I didn't know how I was going to do it yet. And I'm gonna teach you what I did. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna be working on in the workshop today in this talk, but I was determined. And I said, I'm gonna go learn how to do this, how to take personal responsibility in my life. And so I did that. And not only did I learn about it, I started incorporating it into my life. And that's when things started to change. That's when I was able to let go of this anger, pain, blame, whatever it is that was just weighing down on me, holding me back. And through that experience of learning how to take personal responsibility and incorporating that into my life, I, everything changed. Uh, instead of complaining, I started to create. I started to create the things that I wanted to see instead of focusing on the things that I can't do, the things that, um, you know, uh, thinking that, uh, doubting myself or thinking that I'm not worthy. I just focused on this is what I want. This is what I wanna have in my life. This is what I wanna have in my business, in my career in my relationships, and I started to create that. And I learned the following through that experience, through taking personal responsibility, and just in my own life, and in my own work, and also with the, 
the hundreds of clients that I've worked with, that I worked with at the time and since then. And I learned that in order to be successful and fulfilled in our business and our career, we need the following. We need to have a good understanding of who we are, right? Who we are. Not all the negative experience or the things, the challenges that we've had, but really who we are at our core, our qualities, our values, our beliefs, what our vision is for the world and the things that we want to create in this world and what our mission is. We need to know that about ourselves. Two, we need to take personal responsibility and have a leadership mindset. Three, we need to have excellent communication skills. I help each and every one of my clients develop these three areas in order to help them to thrive and to be successful. And today, we are going to zoom in to that second check mark, which is how to adopt and start creating a leadership mindset and to take personal responsibility in your life so you can have this too. Are we ready? Give me a thumbs up, ready to go. I'm just gonna take a drink. Okay, so as we're going to move into the teaching piece now, I'll share the background and I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Thank you for the thumbs up, Yona. <laughs> Um, I'm going to teach you how to do it. This is going to, I want to, I would love to have your participation in this as well. It's going to just make this talk better uh, because opposed to me talking, I want to be able to, I want to help you start incorporating this into your life so that you can even start doing this today. That's the goal. All right. So we're going to get started with some show and tell. So the way that I started on my journey and learning about taking personal responsibility was through the work of Dr. William Glasser. He wrote the book called Choice Theory. Okay, um, he's actually um, a psychiatrist um, by training. He passed away a number of years ago. But I wanna, we're gonna lay down some of the basic foundation and principles of choice theory and see how we can start applying it into our life so we could take and adopt that leadership mindset that is so necessary for us to have. William Glasser makes a distinction between what he calls external control psychology versus internal control psychology. External control psychology is the belief, the feeling, the understanding that things outside of us have control over us, right? This feeling like there's nothing we can do. Things are controlling us. Versus internal control psychology which is the belief, the feeling, the understanding that we actually have a lot of control and there's much more in control that we have in control than we realize. We have much more power than we realize and that we actually tap into because we're so used to being socialized with external control, right? So this being said, um, and his goal, his purpose is to really help us to nurture this internal control, to help us understand it and see it and help us to develop this in ourselves so that we can find our freedom, whether it's in our career or in our personal life. So let's review some of the key concepts of choice theory. And then we're going to see, and this is where I'm going to ask for your participation. We're going to see how this plays out in our everyday life and experiences. Okay, so. We have no control over what another person says, does, or feels, right? And sometimes we get stuck there. We'll talk about that. No one has any control over what we say, do, or feel. But sometimes we say things like, you're making me so mad. Why are you making me do this, right? We say those, that type of, those types of phrases often. And in essence, we're giving up our power and control when we do that. So the only thing that we have any control over is ourselves and ourselves in the present, right? We cannot control what happened a half a second ago, even less time than that, whatever happened. The past is <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> can't control that. And we also can't control what's going to happen in the future. And it's so interesting that these are the two areas that we tend to get so stuck in. Right? We might not go for that job or give that talk or, 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 or you know, invent that new idea, maybe because of past failures, 
right? Or we're scared of what might happen, right? So our past mistakes hold us back. We get stuck there. We, 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 we start to, you know, think that, you know, these things are controlling us. We allow those things to control us rather. Or we're stuck in the future, what might happen? But I don't, we don't have any control over those things. So I would love to now bring it back to the just like regular everyday experiences. So if you want to unmute yourselves, that would be fantastic. <laughs> so here's where I'm going to ask for your participation. Now there's no right or wrong answer. So you could just kind of throw out the answers to what I'm going to put out there. Um, you get a text message in the middle of a meeting or in the middle of this talk. What do you do? Right anxiously until I open it. <laughs> okay. 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 I, I love that you're being getting very specific about, about your answer, like internally also. That's great. Um, anyone else want to say? Anyone else want to share? Who else is here? I, I'm looking to the side because I have another screen here that I'm looking at. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, you now I guess I'll use you <laughs> if that's okay. Um, Let's see, another type of experience. Um, you know, I'm just gonna throw this out there and I'd love to hear from everyone. Let's say you've come up, you, you're you working with your team, you come up with a great business name or not even with your team, alone. Um, you came up with a great business name for your new business. You're really excited about it. Someone then comes and tells you, okay, someone else is another uh, company out there. They have a same or similar, very similar business name. What do you do? And anyone else, including Yona, can... Uh, Jump in here. Uh, this actually happened to me uh, in a startup <laughs> that I founded 18 years ago and worked on for two and a half years and then went to a trade show and discovered that another company had something that I thought was nearly identical. And I called back my patent attorney and said, uh, it's completely a true story. Say, Paul, I'm going to have to go and flip burgers. It's game over for us. Mm, okay, so you, you threw in, you, you said, okay, it's game over. He actually said, uh, Alex, don't, uh, don't be stupid. And uh, give me the name of the company. I'll go study their patents and figure out exactly if they're really identical to us or just very close. And he came back the next day and said, uh, they're not close. They're, they're similar, but not the same. Their patents are different. We'll be able to get ours, go back and work. And the next day we went back to that show with my sales guy and we found our first customer. <laughs> okay, it's a good story. All right, say 2005. And we're going to keep applying to that, and because we're going to want to use that soon, we're going to come back to that and talk about the mindset that was there, because that's what's key, right? That's what we want to pick out on, and then build, you know, continue to develop, and you know, moving forward. So, uh, another example that can happen, right? You go out for funding, you're excited, um, you know, you meet with some funders, but then they send you a letter of rejection and say, you know, what, we're not going to be able to fund your your startup. You, what do you do? Okay, no right or wrong answers. You know, again, internally, externally, what do you do? What's your reaction? Uh, it hurts. It actually yeah. hurts your ego. And then, uh, but that's what I teach the students. It, just, it doesn't matter how many rejections you get. Ask them why. Ask them why they rejected you, so you can at least learn from from the experience. And Beautiful. then you just keep on going. Someone eventually will say yes. Okay, good. And about what we're about to say next is going to even help you teach that better. I believe, okay? Because we're gonna add another layer here. William Glasser points out in choice theory, and this is super important, the next thing, the next slide that I'm about to share. I think this is the key to our understanding. Everything that's happening around us, all it is is information. All it is is information, right? Now, once we realize it's information, we have this space. But what's the information? First, we need to realize and understand that this is information. What's the information when someone is sending you a text? What's the information there? Anybody else wants to uh, chime in here? Happy to hear from you. What's the information? Got a text message. What does it mean? Someone's trying to get in touch with you. Uh, maybe they want to sell you something, right? They want your attention. Somebody wants your attention, okay? Uh, what's the information, right? When you find out someone has that similar name to you, just the information now. Not what it means. We're not even looking for that. What, what is the information? Just what's in front of you? When that happened, what's in front of you? There is the text. Um, 
text, actually, the tone. What's that? There, the text in right in front of you, potentially the tone, if it's a personal communication, how many exclamation points, capital letters. Yeah. Um, so, right, if it's the business name, it's just that's the information. That's what's happening here, right? There's someone with a similar name, right? Are they the same exact company? Like your friend, colleague said, we don't know yet. But what we do know is that there's this name there, right? That's very similar to ours. Okay. Um, and when you get rejected, anyone gets rejected from funding, okay, information, which is why you tell your students ask why, right? And why can we do that? Because once we realize it's information and all it is is information, this is what really frees us. It means that we don't have to react or respond in any one way, right? It helps us to realize that we have choices depending on what we, and we can choose depending on what we want our experience to be. And I'm gonna keep saying, I'm gonna say that again, cause that's what's important. So what are our choices, right? If something, it feels like when we get that text message, right? Even if we're in the middle of something important, it feels like we have to react or respond, but we don't. We actually have choices, internal and external. And we're not tapping into this power, let's be very honest, right? That means we're stuck in external control. But let's come back and recognize what we actually have the power to do. So when you get that text message, what are your choices, both internal and external? Like you said, you can feel you were feeling anxious about it. You could choose not to feel anxious about it. You could choose to think, right? The feeling is coming from something that we believe or we think. So you're thinking, I have to answer it. And that's what's causing the anxiety. But you could choose to think what? What can you choose to think? I could choose to think it's a political poll that I can just safely delete. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is yet. I can be here and focus and, and be present with what I'm doing and it's fine and it's okay, right? So we have the power to choose what we think about a situation, right? Because when it's information, it can be lots of different things, right? So what is, um, when it's, what are your choices, right? What are your choices when someone's got this uh, business name? What are your choices when it comes to that? You can really get down about it and throw in the towel and say, forget it and start to doubt yourself and to doubt everything that you and your colleagues and your team have been working on. You can do that. You can just say, forget it, we're done or just feel really bad. Or you can choose what? Well, I choose choose. My partner attorney said, you know, wait, wait till we see the- Wait, news. let's get some more information here. Hold up, right? Let's see what's happening. Let's gather the information so that we can see what's in front of us and make the right choice moving forward, right? What's the information, right? So what are your choices when you're not getting that funding? It hurts, you could get hurt, you could get down. What else can you do? You can say what Thomas Edison said. I just discovered one more way that doesn't work. Thomas Edison <laughs> was asked once how he kept looking for the filament solution to, I think, almost a thousand failed attempts. Yeah. And the guy who asked him says, how did you handle a thousand failures? He says, it didn't fail a single time. I kept finding solutions that didn't work. <laughs> That's beautiful. Exactly. Because he has that leadership mindset. And that is the attitude. Because it's a learner mindset. Because we fail a lot. We fail. That's just what happens. <laughs> we make an attempt, at, and that's how we learn, right? We learned how to do this. This is happening when we all when we learned how to walk, right? We didn't question it. We just we we're focused on our goal. We kept moving forward. We got up again because we have the we have this mindset. It's inside of us, right? So we want to tap into that. We have choices, right? You could get down about that, or you could view it as information about you know. Okay, we didn't get funding. What does this mean? What's happening? Maybe there's something that we can do better. We've got to do better that we can improve. What are we learning from this situation that will help us do better next time and keep moving forward? So we have choices. And how do we know that we have this power to choose? We have this power that sometimes we don't realize and that we're not tapping into, or maybe more often than not. What does it feel like for you when Someone is trying to get you to do something, maybe that you don't want to do or buy something. What is that? What's your experience? 
How do you react or respond? I feel pressured. Okay, so you feel this pressure. What about when you're trying to get someone else to do something that you know is good for them? What's your experience with that? They also feel pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Human beings resist being controlled. Right, so with animals, there's stimulus and there's response. You can train them, right? It's just an automatic thing. Human beings, we resist that. Why? Because we have this power to choose. And when we don't tap into that power, we end up reacting and responding and getting to what I call this hamster wheel and not moving forward. And that's where we get stuck. So in order to really develop this leadership mindset within ourselves, we need to recognize that we have the power to choose and to nurture this within ourselves, to recognize this and to make choices based on what it is that we want to create. And I really love how Stephen R. Covey um, brings this, puts this together. He says, between stimulus and response, there is space. In that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. Okay, so we have that ability. So now, I really love how Byron Katie brings all of this together. She is the author of Loving What Is, and she says that there are three businesses in the world. My business, other people's business, and God's business. And the reason that we get stuck, and the reason that we hold ourselves back from, from uh, moving forward, the reason that we doubt ourselves, the reason that we're unhappy, the reason that we're not being successful or not reaching our potential, whether it's on our professional lives and careers and businesses or in our personal life and relationships, is because we are stuck and spending most, if not all of our time in two areas that are completely out of our control, which is other people's business and God's business. What does that mean? What's other people's business look like? Other people's businesses looks like when we're getting other people in our head and it really clouds our thinking and we get really confused and we're thinking, what is it that they would want me to do? What is it that they think I should do, right? Or when we are, we are in other people's business and we're thinking about what is it that we think that they should do, or we get into you know, blaming and complaining about what they're doing or what they're not doing, we're putting all of our energy there. And then how do we feel? We feel frustrated, right? We feel powerless. stuck. Because one only we are powerless to change what they do. What's that? We also end up feeling powerless because fundamentally we are powerless to do, to change what other people do. Excellent, yes. And if we stay there, we will continue to feel powerless and that will have an impact on our self-confidence. Like we end up you know, kind of doing nothing and uh, I don't know, watching Netflix all day because we don't believe that we can do anything and we don't actually fulfill our potential or do the things that we're meant to be doing here in this world. Because we're stuck in other people's business. What do they think of me? What are they going to do? Why aren't they doing it? You know, if only they would change and do what they needed to do, my team, if only they, then we would really move forward. No, that's not a leader, right? A leader takes leadership. God's business is why is this happening? It's not supposed to happen. That shouldn't have happened. I don't know if it should. It did. <laughs> it happened, right? I don't have control. So what we want to be focusing on is we want to get out of those other businesses, the areas that are completely out of our control and focus in on our business and what is in our control. So I'd love to bring this now back to you to all of you here. Think about a challenge that you have right now or that you're experiencing or a decision that, um, that you need to make, right? That there's a deadline to make some sort of decision that you're thinking about. Um, we could do it right now, right here. If anybody wants to share a challenge, anything that they're uh, struggling with or a decision or something that they want to think about, move forward with more clarity on. Does anybody have an example? Even if you don't, 
like want to share out loud. What I'm encouraging you all to do right now here in this moment is to think about that situation that you're in and ask yourselves, what is complete, when it comes to this situation or this decision, what is completely out of my control? Anyone want to just shoot out some examples? What's out of your control? I'll give you an example that actually an SMS that happened, a conversation that happened just a couple of hours ago. And oh, nice. Very uh, hot off the press. When your old daughter wants to go for a trip with Lawrence, with a girlfriend, and come back and asking us if she can do bidud in our home. And okay. that migrates for Corona. So that's an interesting question. The wife has asked me, what do I want to do? So I can't control where the 20 year old goes. I may not even be able to control what my wife will choose to do. And I've got to deal with a potentially serious decision. Do I let her do be due to my home and potentially expose myself to whatever she's bringing back from the airport? Or do I say no and crazy relationship cost with her and potentially my wife? So that's, that's actually the truth and two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to think very clearly about what's within my control and what's outside of my control. She's not gonna take my input about that trip. Yeah, okay. So when you use this, so you, you can actually start applying this and it, because we could only make choices and move forward, right? When we're making choices based on the things that are in our control, right? That's just gonna help us move forward much more effectively. Um, so, and, and successfully. So when you think about those things, Yona, I don't know if you wanna share here or in any of us, right? For all of you to share, to, to understand, um, what is in your control? What's the only, what, tell, you could share with us, what are the things that are in your control when it comes to this situation? First, how I feel about it, how I manage whatever fear gets triggered by the situation, which for me is a big homework already. And then how do I speak back to my wife? Do I? Yep. And then, you know, how much, how much do I insist on my view versus our view? And so kind of it's a three-way negotiation. It's not so simple. And uh, choose to express my view and how strongly or to just give it up. There's no way the choice between asserting or giving up for peace. Right. That's the choice. That's the only choice I have. Yeah. But how I speak and how I feel. Yep. How I feel. And sharing. Yep. And what your values are. And, and expressing those and expressing your needs and expressing your boundaries. You can do all of that, right? Those things are in your control. So that was a very good, thank you, personal life example. I don't know if anyone has a, uh, a more of a business um, career focused example. Um, I don't know, you, going on interviews or talking to investors. We could talk about that, right? Um, what's out of your control? You don't know what decision they're gonna make. At the end of the day, the decision lies with them, right? <laughs> What's in your control, right? You don't know how they're going to feel about what you're going to say. What's in your control is to do your research, get to know who these investors are, who you're speaking to, understand what their quote unquote quality world is, what is important to them, right? You can make sure that you do everything in your power to create a great presentation, to train yourself, to present yourself. Like, you know, Yona was saying, you, you know, you have that control in terms of how you express yourself, how you speak, how you carry yourself, how prepared you are. That's all in your control. But when you get stuck and thinking about what are they going to think? What are they going to say? What's going to happen? It's going to throw you off your game. And so you want to be in your best possible, um, the best energy, bring your best to this, you know, whether it's a presentation or a pitch that you're making, for example, and then you want to focus on what is in your control and do that to the best of your ability. And that's all you can do. That's all any of us can do. So let's, reviewing this, in order to develop a leadership mindset, you wanna get clear on what is and what is not in your control. Because sometimes that could get all mixed up and you can just, so when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling self-doubt, when you're feeling powerless, that is an indicator that you're hanging out in the areas that are not in your control. So you're, or you're not clear about what's in your control, or if you're feeling confused, it means you're not so clear about what's in your control, what's out of your control yet. 
So take the time to get clear on that. I literally, I take out a piece of paper and I make a line down the middle, old school. And I write out what is in my control in this situation and what's out of my control. The next step is to let go of what is not in your control. Sometimes people miss this step. So now that you have clarity on what is and what is not in your control, let go of it. Let go of what's not in your control. It's not going to serve you. It's only going to hold you back. So what are you going to do? You're going to look at what's in your control and you're going to take, take personal responsibility. Take personal responsibility and then choose to create what you want to see based on the experience that you want to have. That's what you can do. Any questions about any of this before I move on to two other practical tools before we end that, that I want to share with you to help you develop this mindset? Anything about what we've spoken about? What's in your control? What's out of your control? Choices. Can you repeat which book of Byron Katie you quoted? Yes, it's called Loving What Is. And um, I want to share a little bit about that. The, the book, it's, I'll tell you, with all of this work, by the way, this isn't, I know this, it's not rocket science, but I'm teaching. The power is in incorporating these concepts into your life and actually doing the work, right? Really focusing on letting go of what's not in your control, being the person that you want to be, focusing on what's in your control and creating that moving forward. When it comes to loving what is, she's going to, she shares her work. She shares about the three businesses, and then it's about it's all anecdotes from the work that she's done with people. The power is in when it comes to hers, and I'm happy to talk about it with you another time. Is actually doing what she suggests. So just putting that out there as a you know uh, helpful I guess suggestion <laughs> about it. It's all about doing it ourselves. Any other questions? So let's move on and teach you another, some other things that you can do. Our language, how much, I don't know how much of you, if we pay enough attention to the language that we use. But the language that we use has an impact on us, on the way that we think about ourselves or about the things um, that we're doing, um, on the way that we feel, and then on the way that we behave. So look at the language that you're using. What phrase do you notice about yourself that you notice that you use often or the most often? Maybe there's some here. When it comes to these three, are these familiar to you? Just looking at my other screen. What language or phrase do you find yourself often saying? I have to. I have to. That's a big one. That's a really big one. And now when you say I have to, and I'm guessing it, Yona, first of all, I just really appreciate you're like the, you're the MVP of the of the day. <laughs> so thank you so much. Cause I know that you also I don't like when it's only one way. <laughs> I appreciate it. This is important. I, I really do believe that if, even if people are, are not uh, yet comfortable participating, that everyone is learning through this. Because I have to is a big one. And I'm sure you're going to speak for most people when you're, when you're going to share with us. When you say, I have to, what's the impact of that? Think about that. Let's think about that. I have to. I have to. I have to do well. I have to do these things on my list. I have to call that person. I have to go into this meeting. What does that feel like? Pressure. Pressure, right? Because who's in control there? I have to. Do you have to? You don't have to. We don't have to do it. We don't have to do anything. When we tell ourselves we have to, it's as if someone else or something else is making us do something. That doesn't feel good. So we're creating extra baggage extra resistance when it doesn't need to be there. And this is weighing us down and holding us back from moving forward, from flowing, from creating, from innovating, from succeeding, from thriving, right? So instead, so here's what you could do, a very practical thing. Take the phrase out, take it out and replace it with the phrase that's going to, it's much more proactive, right? Because all of this, I'll try, I have to, I can't, there's nothing I can do. 
there's no other way, it's so hard, I can't do it, right, is reactive. And it puts up this wall. I mean, basically, we, we're always pro with our words, with our language, with our thoughts, we're, it, it, we're putting in, it's like we're typing into a program, like if we were the computer, we're typing it in. We're giving it direction. It's I have to. Okay, the body thinks, the brain thinks, the mind thinks, I have to. We resist. We resist. But if we say, I choose to, what happens then? I'm choosing to go to this meeting. I'm choosing to answer this text very mindfully. I'm choosing to be fully present here. I'm choosing to not go to this meeting. What's the difference? <laughs> Feels much more calm. You feel calm. calm. So you feel pressure, and now you feel calm. I'm choosing not to. Yeah, and now, right, there's more clarity. There's more flow. So the homework that you all have is to choose that phrase, the phrase that you constantly say whether it's I'll try, I have to, I can't, or something similar, and decide today if you really, because this is if you want to really create this leadership mindset, decide today which one, you could file it away and start using this other language, whether it's I will, I choose to, I'll find a way, whatever is most relevant for you, that really that's the one that fits, that one that um, feels the most right right now, go with that one. And anytime, because what's going to happen is you're, your brain is going to resist, but we're so used to saying, I have to, we're so used to it, right? So it's working. We're surviving. What's the problem here, <laughs> right? So there's going to be resistance, but here's what you get to do because you have more power. You get to say, okay, anytime that comes up that I have to replace it with, I choose to, I hear you coming. I'm replacing you now. You're not serving me. You're not helping me get to where I want to go replace it with that language. It's building a muscle. Each time you do that, you will become a person who just creates this new habit of you're a person that says I choose to and not a person that says I have to anymore. For me, it was I'll try. What does I'll try do? I'll try. It means I don't really fully believe in myself. I have one foot in, one foot out, giving myself an escape route. I'm not the only one. Lots of people do that. But once I'm moving into I will, whoa, now I've got it. Now I'm taking responsibility. Now it's either I will or I won't. I walk differently. I speak differently. People treat me differently as a result, right? I'll try. I have to. I will. I choose to. I'm going to find a way. It's different, right? Any questions about the language before we move on to one last tool I want to share with you? Okay, that was clear. <laughs> We're good. Okay, great. This is one of my favorite tools, the choice map. I love it because it's such a great visual and it comes from the book, Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee Adams. And so we talked about language and now we can talk about the questions that we ask ourselves, right? When something, so the start, at the start is any situation, whether we're about to start something, whether um, a new idea, whether we have a challenge, something came up, um, we can either take one or two routes. We can go into judger. We could blame ourselves. We could blame somebody else. Oh man, who did this? Whose fault is it? What's going on now, right? And we could get stuck in there and start blaming ourselves and blaming others. And where do we end up? We end up in the pit. We end up, maybe we're gonna be moving forward. Either we're gonna be moving forward very slowly or we're just gonna keep getting stuck. What are you noticing about these questions? These are why questions. Why questions are generally not in terms of, not the why uh, out of curiosity, but these types of why questions, you know, we get defensive, right? They're blaming type questions. They're not gonna get us where we wanna go. Instead, and we've got, we can tend to be very abusive of ourselves too when we, when we get something wrong, when we make a mistake, right? We could move into this judger, but it's not gonna help us move forward. Instead, you want to shift into a learner mindset or what we've been talking about this leadership mindset. The learner mindset is asking questions out of curiosity. What happened? All it is is information. This is our background. This is our base. I'm here to learn something. It's here to teach me something. It's here 
to help me get better, to help me improve, to help me move forward. Now I have belief in myself and I'm understanding that I'm here to learn and I'm here to grow and blaming myself or blaming others is really, it's not going to get me anywhere. It's not going to do anyone any good. People, my clients actually really like to use this to hang it up. Um, I encourage you to go to the inquiryinstitute.com. You can even download, um, down, you know, download this, this image. Um, and and I, I think there's a charge there for that now. Um, the idea there is to, so people, oh, people put it on their fridge, people have this image to just to help you, just to serve as a reminder as that, you know, um, th that uh, kind of that bell that says, okay, wait a minute. I'm in judger mindset now. This isn't helping me. I'm feeling heavy. Um, everyone's feeling heavy around me. Uh, we're not moving forward. Let's make this switch. Okay, so this is just going to serve you and help you to be more mindful. Based again, it all depends on the experience you want to have. That's what it comes down to. And then you can make that choice. Any questions about this? We're okay. So, <laughs> thank you. So let's just take a review. Your pathway to developing a leadership mindset. So learn about choice theory and incorporate it into your life. That's the key. We reviewed the three businesses. Okay, one thing you can do if you're ever feeling anxious or feeling not in control, ask yourself, whose business am I in? Where am I right now? And what you're going to notice is you're probably going to be noticing that you're out of your own business and then get back into your business and ask yourself questions, get clear on what is in your control. Ask yourself questions based on what is in your control. Remember to let go of what's not in your control. And think about the language that you use. Make that shift, you could start today, now. And it'll take time to help you develop this language. Be patient with yourself, but keep going. Keep going because you will get to the point where it just becomes you and who you are. And that will have an impact not only on how you speak, but how you do things, both in your professional and in your personal life. And you could also think about and work on the questions that you're asking yourself and practice that. Practice, ask when anytime you're in a situation, change your questions. Are you in blaming questions? Where is that getting you? How is that helping you? If it's not helping you, shift your questions. It means you're in judger come back to learner. And that's going to help you to move forward much more effectively. So I don't know if there's any more questions here, but I'd love to hear also, you do have a question? Or are you saying bye-bye? <laughs> you know? That was an applause symbol. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I'd love to hear from you. You can either share it again out here out loud or in the chat also to me privately, but what are you taking away from this talk today? Do you also maybe flash some contact information for you for people who want to follow up with you or your business? Yeah, it's the next yeah, that, slide. That how to really get a hold of you and... Absolutely, yes, it's the next slide on my, I'm gonna to go to that and then you can either uh, snap, you know, snap that or um, if you'd like. Um, but yeah, but I'd love to hear what you're taking away. That's. What, what do you, what's a nugget, something, a thought, an idea, um, anything? What are you taking away from today's talk? It's important, uh, you know, attitude is important. Attitude is important and can uh, change the way you feel. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to thank Alex for doing all the questions until now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I listen. I listen. I it was very you, exciting. Both, both Thank you so much. Who else wants to share something you're taking away? Yeah, I think that the, the, the language that you use can affect your ac actions. Absolutely. Yes. And in fact, very small change can make a very big difference. Mm. Yep. One word, two words. Yeah. I choose, to, I choose to is only one word different. Yeah. And it has a tremendous impact. It's unbelievable. 
Okay. Do anyone else like to share? We want you to visit us in uh, NHSA and then maybe meet mm -hmm. Alex and everybody. And, uh, I love that. Yeah, so why won't you just uh, coordinate with Ozzy when you can turn? And we organize, uh, you know, face-to-face -face meetings. Okay, that would be fantastic. I just want to say thank you. Thank you all of, to all of you for showing up, for being here. You didn't have to be here. You chose to be here. Um, and I think that says a tremendous, a, tre a tremendous amount about who you are and what you, um, how you want to grow and how you want to help yourself develop. Um, so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share with you. I hope that you found it helpful. Um, I'm here. I'm available to you anytime you have a question, especially when we spoke about. Um, I'm happy to offer to each of you that are here a complimentary consultation. You can feel free to get in touch with me here, um, either through WhatsApp or by email or through my website. Um, happy to continue the conversation with you anytime. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, Thank you very much, up. Jenny. It's very interesting. Great. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.